What's going on my fellow Farmall brothers and sisters? All right, we're back. We're gonna get back to work and start doing our tractor stuff. But today, since it's a beautiful day out, it's the day before Memorial Day, we're gonna take the old Super Ray out for a little cruise. So stay tuned and let's mount up. All right, my friends so for those of you who are new to the channel i want to introduce my 1949 farmall super a that has been dubbed christine <laughs> um a lot of work's been done in this tractor um this was my i don't know i guess what you could say this is still my pride and joy this is this is my beauty right here the farmall 300 is going to be a, a contender but this is always going to be my favorite so anyway so i don't even know where to begin i've done so much to this tractor um this motor the motor was locked and seized all the valves the the whole valve train on the head um the chambers everything was rusted solid there wasn't a single thing inside this engine um that wasn't rusted <laughs> and locked up the sleeves the pistons the cylinders uh everything the rings everything was done this thing was pretty much on its way to the scrapyard <clears throat> um so this engine's been completely rebuilt um everything inside of it i did the head work i did all the uh the valve job as you will see on my other videos of the cub and stuff like that the valve job that i did um same thing to this everything on this thing has been restored and replaced um it's you know the motor's new everything inside of it um the clutch the brakes um everything has been sanded down and scrubbed and scraped and wire wheeled <laughs> There was a lot I did to it. You know, it's got all new shoes all the way around. Um, I'll put the bigger ones on the front. I've had some people ask me again for the size. There's your size right here. So I went with the five by 15s to give it a little bit fatter of a look on the front. And on the backs, I went ahead and I went with 11.2 uh, by 24s. And these are the Crop Masters. As far as the rims, they're Titan rims. Uh, they're the nine by 28s. And I did powder coat them. So they are powder coated in chrome with a clear coat on them. Titans seem to work pretty good. That's about the closest you're gonna to get to factory as far as the mounting system right here, because a lot of the ones you get off eBay, they're round. They're not the right ones. So at least Titan, they had them in the square for me to use my square heads, which is what I wanted, so it worked out good. I do have wheel weights for the front and rear of this. Just, this thing's never gonna haul anything where I'm gonna need it or drag anything I'm gonna need it, so I don't put them on. Um, front rims. They're the original, and they're again powder coated, as you see. Everything came out nice. The paint on this, the reason that it is red and white, which for the people who are new subscribers, I'm going to explain to you exactly why this particular tractor is red and white. When this thing came from West Virginia, apparently one of the dealers out there, at one point, I'm guessing the second owner of its life, they went ahead and um, the the Farmall dealership put the red and white on this thing back in the 50s. I'm guessing the reason they did it was to compete and make it, you know, in the lineup with all the new 50 series tractors. So they wanted to make it look newer. So they did have the red and white. It wasn't white on the frame, it wasn't white on all the fenders, it wasn't white everywhere, so it's not a demonstrator. But this tractor in its lifetime was painted with the red and white. It wasn't as nice, but it was done. So when I stripped all the paint off, I started finding some of this white, but I found it in certain areas, as you see where it is now. So I went ahead and instead of going with bright white, I went with the IH off-white, which some people seem to think it's gold. It's not gold. Let me come around here into the sunlight. You'll see she's white, as you see. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so anyway, that's why this particular tractor you know, is in red and white. Yes, they came from the factory all in red. This tractor's history, this one was done in red and white. I went back to what was done to it in its history. So there you got this. I did have custom stickers made, as you see, so I went ahead and had the red Super A Cultivation stickers done, so it accents off the white, and I had the custom stickers made here, so instead of having that Mylar background where it, to me, doesn't look as good, especially on a show tractor, so I went ahead and these are all individual letters, and I had those made. Um, from Steiner, do have the stainless steel exhaust on it, which I like, which the tone of the exhaust, since it's got that stainless steel look, um, it's got that little hue to it, 
well that's why i did the wheels the way i did because i wanted everything to kind of pick up on itself as far as the color combination as you see everything i did to this tractor there was a purpose and a reason why i did it um all the way down to choke rods i drilled all these out i put rubber grommets in there and as you see they don't vibrate they don't move around um as far as you know like scraping the paint off these are all cerakoted rods right here um so none of this will wear off as easy all this is all cerakoted not spray painted black um <clears throat> carburetor again watch some of the past videos you'll see the carburetor was completely roached um i'm surprised i actually got that running and working as good as it is now it's a complete rebuild on that as well i did go with a chinese carburetor twice and it was a mistake both times so i took it off and rebuilt the original zenith works much better um rebuilt the generator on it um everything works beautiful on the charging system it is a six volt system and i have zero issues out of it whatsoever also i went ahead and rebuilt the magneto on it and i like the magnetos i really do i, I thoroughly love the fact of that you don't need a battery for this um the magneto works perfectly this thing it sat in the garage probably for about two months now um i haven't had it started or out in about two months i went ahead and turned the fuel on and the throttle wasn't very really high it was, it was pretty low no choke and literally as it hit the end of the first revolution it fired right off instantly so it works perfectly um i have no issues with this thing whatsoever anymore um everything as you see inside out underneath this thing i meticulously went over everything on this tractor um there is not a spot of rust or rot or anything that hasn't been painted, coated, sealed, scraped, or redone. I've done everything to this tractor. Um, I did one ahead and I put in a new pan, um, pedal cover. Works good, I like it. I still like the original the way it fit better, um, but this actually works okay. I may rework that original one in the future, not sure. Um, I am gonna replace the seat. That's one thing I've been kicking around is pulling the seat cover off. I'm gonna put the seat cover probably on the cub and I want to actually get the actual upholstery seat for this, so I am going to change that seat out. Steering. Steering was a whole new ball game. If you guys want to see what I did to the steering, go back to some of my past videos. This thing right now, if you hold that steering wheel, no sooner you start kicking that thing just slightly to the left, slightly to the right, it grabs perfectly. Um, it actually probably works better than it did when it was new. You'll see what I did to the sector shaft. You'll see what I did to the gearing inside, everything inside. I went ahead the three fingers on the sector shaft. I went ahead and ran weld down all three sides of those fingers. And then I ground them slowly. I put this bottom um, shaft on, I, I total brain fart, I'm sorry. I, I consider it like a drag link in a way, but anyway, I went ahead and it's dusty. Um, I went ahead and file fit this to that sector shaft and it took all the side to side movement out and it took all the up and down movement out. The way I took that up and down movement out was where the bolt goes through and it locks us to the sector shaft. The sector shaft has a slight, I feel like I'm saying that word a lot, but I have to. It's the only parts in the box really. Has the uh, notch cut out for the bolt to go through. Well, if that starts to wear out and you put that bolt through there and you bolt this to that sector shaft, this will actually move up and down. So I went ahead and I put some weld inside of that half moon and I tightened it up so I actually had to almost drive fit that bolt through there to lock it in place and it literally took every ounce of play out of the steering. The only play I get in it now is just a tad through the ball joints and that's it. Other than that, nothing else moves. This thing works perfectly. Um, resealed it, all new bearings, everything, doesn't leak. It actually has no corn head grease in there. It is filled with the oil, with the gear oil and it does not leak or drip. Um, let's see what else? Oh yeah, on top of the paint. This is magic paint. Um, this is single stage magic paint, and they say you can't really wet sand it. You can't do anything with it. Well, yes, you can. If you take your time, you can actually wet sand magic paint down, as I did here. Um, it's two coats of magic on there, and then they're wet sanded in between each coat. Got it real nice and smooth, and it's actually speed coat clear coat on top of that. I got three coats of speed coat clear on there, and that's wet sanded as well. And as you see. This thing shines like the mirror. I mean, look at that. The grill, same thing. This was all smashed in. This was all smashed in. The welds were all broke through here. All the fingers were all, every single one went a different way. Um, the inside support bars, they were bent and broke loose. All the welds were broke. 
and this was actually so bad right here this was actually driven in and then the bracket to it was actually facing up so i had to re-bend all the bracket back down i had to re-weld a washer into the original opening and then i had to bang all this straight because all this was all caved in it was all shoved up and in um this was probably the worst part was banging all this out because it's got that metal ring on the inside right here so it was you know pretty difficult getting that perfect but i think it came out pretty perfect to me it looks beautiful um you can see how nice and smooth it is and we see original lights it's got the original guide glass and everything in it the only thing i had to do was replace the seals and the reflectors and the connectors on the back from steiner i did go ahead and order a new wiring harness from steiner as well because wiring harness this thing has been cut so many times through its lifetime it was in awful shape so i went ahead and replaced that um over here same thing starter i went ahead and i drilled out the bracket put in the rubber grommets takes all the play all the wobble you can get all that vibration out of it um works perfect cerakote rods in graphite black cerakote it um, for the hydraulics same thing graphite new clevis pins um this i had the six volt battery in not an eight volt i do have an eight volt in the 300 and it works really good um and then we'll get around to the back side and the back side i do have now the swing and draw bar on here it actually looks pretty good out in the sunlight on there so the reason I went ahead and did that was because the steps that I make and sell, um, a lot of people are wondering if you can mount those steps with swing and draw bars and stuff, and you can. Um, as you see, it's on there, and here's the steps that I make. You can see right there. These are completely handcrafted by me. Um, so obviously everybody knows if you want one, all you gotta do is order one. Seven Valleys Farm Malls at gmail.com. Hit me up, I make them for pretty much everything. Um, they mount on here just like that with the drawbar and not a single issue whatsoever i do make them for the left and right bns as well so anyway um so that's about it as far as really <coughs> going over everything on it um again everything on this tractor has been rebuilt restored replaced um i did have to unfortunately replace the hood because the hood from people pulling the latches and bending the hood up instead of taking the hood off had such a bad crease through the middle i couldn't get this factory crease back so i had to replace the hood unfortunately the gas tank i went ahead and strapped that back to a tractor tire i filled it full of vapo rust and bb's ran it for about 45 minutes for in reverse it took every lick of rust out of that tank check the videos out on that as well you'll see how bad that tank was um everything on this tractor works hydraulics work touch control charging system lights um everything rear light everything works on this thing it's a beautiful little tractor. It's fun. It's um, it's a joy to drive. I love doing it. And if anybody says, oh, he's got a skull <laughs> suicide knob and shifter. Well, that's kind of my thing. I do that on all my tractors. Um, I've done it on all my case tractors. And I'm going to do it on my 300s. And I'm going to do it on my H. I'm going to do it on every single one. So that is my thing right there. I love my little skull knobs and shifters. <laughs> so I decided on this tractor, I wanted to give it a little bit more of that hot rod tractor look. Besides classic, uh, besides original, so I think I achieved what I was going for. Um, I had a vision for this tractor, and I think I pulled it off perfectly. One thing I did replace also was I did replace the clut, the fan assembly um, with the new sealed bearing. That actually works very well. Um, it's maintenance free; don't have to screw with it anymore. Everything's good on it. Um, radiator, same thing. I went ahead and went through that. I straightened all the fins out, flushed it. Um, once everything was fixed on it, I had a pressure tested up to 10 PSI, even though this is non-pressure system. Um, I went ahead and had it tested anyway, just to see if I had any leaks, and this thing is now perfect. Replaced the screen and the grill. Um, I decided to leave that as a natural color. I like that stand, you know, showing through much better. But other than that, let's go ahead and take this thing for a little run. So, like I said, everybody who's new to the channel, hasn't seen this before, well, let's take it for a run. And, uh, you'll get to see what this little thing can do. It actually rolls and drives and shit. I mean, everything is so nice on it. It's a joy. Oh, and I did have somebody ask, why do I have the pulley on the back? This tractor used to have the belly mower on it. I like the look of the pulley, actually. So I decided to not take the pulley off. I wanted to leave that on and remove the belly mower. So if anybody wants to know, that's why I still have that pulley on there. So anyway, all right, well, let's go ahead and get this thing fired up and take it for a run. All right, we're mounted. Let's fire her up. Let's 
third gear. guys have said the camera's a little shaky in there you know, I'll tell you what let's go fourth gear
day out here. Gotta love Pennsylvania. I know I do at least. Now we're gonna come up on the main road. I might stop the video just for the main road. Pick it back up when I get back on my road. I like about here, not a lot of people.
my friends. And that's the farm all super A. As you see, she doesn't miss a lick running. And I can keep giving it more and more and more throttle. Thing works beautiful. Governor, that was a big rebuild as well. Did a lot of work inside the governor. This thing's very snappy. It uh it works great. So anyway, so that's it for the video. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. If you guys want to step, watch my previous videos. Um, you can see the steps that I make. But if you want one, Seven Valleys Farm Malls at gmail.com. The steps are how I fund working on all these other tractors. So anyway, so the next video coming up, we're gonna go ahead and put pistons in the uh, in the little farm all cub, and then we're gonna come back over here to the 300. As I got out here right now, just didn't have time with uh, with some family issues, and then Memorial Day coming up, I don't have time to do uh, jump into this as of yet this weekend. But I got I almost everything new for this one too. New back tires, new front tires, new rear rims, parts, steering wheels. <coughs> You name it, I got it. So the 300 is going to be next. Break this thing down, strip it, clean it, paint it, and put this one back together. And we're going to park her right next to the Super A. So anyway, so I appreciate appreciate you guys watching. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, and share. And again, like I said, the steps that I sell helps fund all the tractors that I work on. Because the biggest tractor that we're going to have to work on is going to be that 300 utility with the backhoe. Because I'm going to restore the backhoe, the front loader, everything. So anyway, yeah, let me run down here before I call off. See how nice those rims shine? They look really good, don't they? <laughs> Definitely beautiful. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great Memorial Day, and until next time.